Hey everyone, it's PB here. Hope you're all doing well. Um, so this is the second video regarding communication. Uh, in this particular one, uh, we'll be looking into words and, and how people use certain words and stuff and, and how it can affect communication. Um, it's it's something that, that yeah, it, it just like a lot of different communication um, things and whatnot, it is quite important. Um, the the very first thing we'll look at is um, slang. Now, slang can be different around the world. I mean, you can have some words that are slang in um, America that will be different from where I'm from, which is Australia. Um, same in, in areas in Europe and that and, and, and that. It sort of depends on on the area that you're from that you can have different slang words and sometimes they can even mean different things depending on where you go. Um, and so slang can be quite important because sometimes it can really help describe what you're trying to say, but sometimes it can also be very offensive too. So, um, so yeah, it can be, very, be quite offensive or inappropriate depending who you're talking to. Um, so if you're talking to someone who's outside of your own culture uh, or someone who speaks little English, that it, it can be something to think about and consider because that can, it can be, that in itself can be difficult to, um, you know, try and try and think about in that. So a good example, like in, in Australia, um, you've got the word sook. Now, um, a good example is, um, so I, I was talking to someone about my dog. Now, um, the person who I was talking to wasn't from Australia. They knew English, but um, it wasn't real good when it came to the slang terms, some of the slang terms that we use. And um, I used the word sook um, to describe my dog. And he didn't really understand the, what the word sook meant, which is fair enough, you know, it's, it's something that, um, you know, it, it happens. And uh, I remember at the time it was something we, we knew the meaning of, but trying to describe it was something, you know, new altogether. Um, now, you, you look up, Sook and it has many different types of meanings, but I looked at this one which um, sort of I, I thought seemed to fit really well. Which um, was you know, it's got a sook, the meaning of a sook could be you know, a crybaby, a complainer, a whinger, someone who's shy or timid, or you know, it's got here a wimp or a coward. But I think that's a bit of a strong, strong stretch there, but certainly, um, you know, it could fit there. I mean, I know a good example regarding um regarding my dog is that you know she's the she's you know kelpie cross staffy and you know lovely dog but you know whenever you're whenever you want to whenever she meets new people all she'll do is roll on her back and want us tummy rub like she's we call her a sub for that reason you know um so that you know that's where something like that can be um an interesting if you had said that to somebody who um didn't understand it that they could take that the wrong way they could probably think that you're calling in that and um so yeah slang is certainly something to um think about when you're talking and, and communicating with people because it can come across the wrong way even if you're not meaning it to, it is certainly something to be um, aware of. Um, things like swearing as well. Uh, I know, I know Aussies swear a lot. Swear a lot. Um, I don't swear too much, but sometimes I do feel that certain swear words can really um, emphasise or just really describe really well what you're trying to say. Um, but it, it, I know it's something for me that I would choose carefully when I went on to sort of, uh, choose to swear or not. I mean, I personally try not to swear around women. That's just my thing. Um, even if they swear, it's still something I try and avoid. It's just, just me. Um, but if I'm talking to an older lady, for example, um, swearing is something I would try and avoid. Um, even an older man sometimes, um, you know, but it can depend if they're swearing like a sailor, then I might, you know, um, you know, say a swear word here or there, but, you know, it depends on what you're talking about and that, and, yeah. And the thing is, when it comes to swearing, sometimes 
some people would declare certain swear words or certain words a swear word and other ones not. So a good example, the word shit. Now, some people could say that is um, a swear word. Some people may not. Um, I've run across, I mean, personally, I wouldn't say it's a swear word, but I think if you want to get technical, it probably is. Um, but that can be te deemed, um, you know, appropriate or inappropriate, depending on how you use it and who you're talking to. Um, you know, and it could depend on the industry and the environment you grew up. Could also depend on how you use swearing and that. Um, I know a lot. For example, I was in a trade for for a little bit there, and you know, um, some of the people would be swearing a fair bit. You know, you go into a lot of trades, and you'll find out that's a bit of a that's kind of the, I guess you would say the culture around the you know the trades of you know being a plumber, electrician, cabinet maker carpenter, um, painter, plasterer, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, but again, if you grew up in an environment where you're, you're hearing swear words all the time, then naturally you'll, pro you, you'll probably end up swearing a fair bit as well. Um, and sometimes because of that, you may end up saying swear words and not even knowing the meaning and even using them at inappropriate times because you, you don't know the education around what that is or, or the best way to use it and, and stuff like that. And so, again, this is where communication is, is very important because knowing how to use verbal communication on top of all the, everything else is very important. So it is, it is very something um, to think about when it comes to using slang and swearing. Um, when it comes to things like um, synonyms for different words. So, um, excuse me, a good, a good thing to think about is um, if you think of the word small or if you might use the word minute, uh, tiny, little, etc. These, some of these can have similarities and some people may think of them as the same thing. Um, so what you might consider small, someone else would consider little or tiny. Um, and so sometimes that can be uh, an interesting way or an interesting thing to think about when it comes to communication. Because if you're trying to describe something, uh, a good example, if you've got like, if, um, if something happens or whatever, and you say, oh, wow, that's a, that's a, that's quite quite a small thing and, and you know someone's like what do you mean that's small that's that's really tiny actually you know and so that's where that can become a little bit problematic and and so knowing trying to work out what the right word to use in in that kind of especially if you're trying to describe something i know i'm part of some emergency services um the S, uh, ses uh, state emergency service and the rural fire service and i know when you're trying to describe someone a situation this is something where that can be very um uh very important because you want to try and use the right words to help describe the situation that other people are going to understand as well now luckily things like this a lot of the time there's not much of a difference a lot of people can get a bit of a rough idea of how you're trying to get at and, and what you're trying to describe even if you do use um, slightly different words like small and tiny but then you can get some words that seem completely disproportionate and completely opposite ends and that's why you'll sometimes get people who are confused and look at you like what do you mean that's not that that's like this you know um, you know, um, a good, so a good, good example is if you're trying to describe um, a hole in the ground, you could say a pothole, a ditch, you know, you might give measurements, you know, just by looking and saying, oh, it's by, you know, a metre wide by, you know, half a metre long or something, you know, or whatever, you know. And you, again, you also might need to keep in mind that 
how you see something is not necessarily how somebody else will see something. How you describe, so how you describe a pothole to be, someone else is going to say, hang on, that's not the size of a pothole, this is a pothole, you know. And that's really something, again, to really keep in mind and be aware of because, yeah, how you see something is not necessarily how someone else will see something. Good example, another good example, I should say. If you think of a flower and then you describe, when, when you hear the word flower, you think of the image that pops in your head of a flower. You describe someone what, what that flower looks like. You ask somebody else, who didn't hear what you said, but you ask somebody else to, you know, you say the word flower, what image, pop, describe the image that pops in your mind. Fair chance there'll be differences. And that happens a lot because as, as we grow up and, you know, learn words and stuff like that, your people will be taught, hey, this is a flower. And then you'll think, hey, I remember seeing this in my garden. You know, you grow up with that and you see that all the time. And so whenever someone mentions flower, that's what you associate that to be. You know, and naturally, that's probably the first image that pop into your head. Um, and so that's why that will be different from everybody else. Um, and it, it's the same with other words as well. You know, we associate words with an image. And so you'll associate something that's small with something that you've seen that you would describe as small. And somebody else would do the same thing. But they might be different sizes and you say well hang on I don't say that small I say that's tiny I'd say this one's small you know and yeah that that's re the reason why um, synonyms for different words is, is very important and and getting a bit of an idea of how to use those things and be aware that and, and more more so be aware that how, you describe something is most likely going to be different to how somebody else does. But that being said, generally, it's not something people will bring up and say, well, hang on, I don't know about that. I would say that's not right. That's this. In Again, in particular, I've noticed in emergency services as well, because when you're talking about stuff like that, normally you don't care. You're like, oh, yeah, I got it, you know, and then you'll go out and do this and, and you'll be in a rush trying to, you know, make sure that you're doing your job right and stuff like that. So that's, you know, something to really, yeah, think about and that. So, yeah. Um, now, when it comes to how you say words, this is more so in the tone of voice. So, again, if someone's stern, you know, generally they'll be direct. They'll be, you know, directing that particular um what they're saying, particularly at a certain person or a certain group of people, um, or really trying to emphasise what they're saying is very either very important or that they're really annoyed about something and they're really trying to drum that into the person, really trying to get them to understand that this is how this must be done, you know, or whatever. Um, if someone's got a soft tone, you know, again, generally that can be the person being quiet or timid, um, you know, sometimes even shy. Uh, or introverted as well. Uh, an open tone, um, which I tend to have a lot of an open tone a fair bit, um, which can be generally, it can be gen generally honest. Sometimes a person, uh, generally someone straightforward. Um, you'll find a lot of people who, um, most people who are straightforward are usually honest as well. Uh, sometimes they can be a bit too honest and not really understand the uh, right way to get get what they want across in a way that sometimes doesn't come across as offensive um and yet sometimes people who are a bit high pitched um and low tone so yeah um yeah low tone and you've got rough tone as well now those last three high pitched low tone and rough tone those generally can depend on the person and it really is mostly on an individual basis um I, in my experience and for what I've learned and that, I don't really see too much um, connections into what those mean and stuff like that. But you'll find that the first three, stern, soft tone and open tone are generally ones you'll see a fair bit. Um, 
And so how you, when you're talking and how you use those words, whether you're using them in a stern voice or a soft tone, open tone and stuff, sometimes that'll depend on how you're how you communicate those and that, that that really comes across to the other person especially in a workplace when you're trying to describe stuff and that sometimes that can really come across so I know a good example is if for example if you're in trouble with your boss and they're not happy with you sometimes they might use a stern voice or well, actually if anyone's not happy with you sometimes they'll use a stern voice um, now me personally, I would usually start off with maybe an open tone and, and explain that I'm not happy with what this is, you know, and you communicate that way because you're building a bit of a sense of trust and environment that they realize, oh, hang on, yes, I'm in trouble, but they're not getting up me, they're trying to work with me. Um, and that really changes the interactions of people and you'll find out that doing stuff like that can sometimes be more helpful than harmful. Whereas if you get somebody who just goes stern straight off the bat, sometimes that, that can feel really, per the person that's being talked to in a stern voice can feel very um, attacked and so they'll feel, that they'll feel the need to be defensive. Um, and so I'll when when trying to communicate with someone is in, in particular when it comes to you know struggles or things that, and then they've done something i'm not happy with and that i'll talk to them openly and explain how i'm so not happy with this you know um what how come did you do this and, you know and find out what what's going on there might be a valid reason you know and then they'll be like oh yeah that, that's understandable yeah all right fair enough you know or it'd be like oh yeah that, that's understandable, but still, I'd prefer it if you do it this way for this, you know, an ABC or whatever. Um, and then if they do it again, then you sort of increase and then you slowly go up to a stern voice um, and then go from there. I know in particular, I've done that with a few people before and people are really shocked when they do it because they know I'm not the kind of person to use a stern voice. But generally, when I reach that point, they're like, holy crap, wow, okay, he's not like this yeah things are serious okay you know and they'll generally stop straight away um but then if you get someone who's using a stern voice all the time and stuff you know especially in those kind of situations it can be very confronting and you'll find that people can be a little bit um apprehensive about wanting to talk to them because they feel that every time they talk to them that's what they're getting um so again, how you say your words, the tone of the voice you use is very important and really something to think about. Um, I touched base on this a bit earlier, which is in what context that you use your words. So um, the way you describe something or emphasize something, as I was saying earlier, in, in the way you use maybe swearing or slang words is something to think about. Um, again, you can also have aggressive words and, and timid or positive words. So think of things like despise, hate, loathe, you know, these may be called aggressive words compared to dislike or not happy or rephrasing things to uh, prefer not to, um, you know, so, so using things like that um, are really, really something to think about and that. Um, so, so knowing these kind of things are very important. So not only can this help people better, under, better understand better, but it gives the person a better understanding of you and can even help, help in giving you an understanding, an understanding response. So if you're, if someone's, you know, being stern toward, towards someone all the time, you know, again, they feel defensive and sometimes that person can make them feel a bit uncomfortable, anxious, and feel like their response might be um, attacked even more. And so sometimes they'll be quiet and say, oh, you know, I don't know, or whatever. Whereas if you're open understanding, they're more likely to give you a more helpful response, an understanding response, which can then help better resolve the situation. You know, if you think of it this way, if you ever felt a conversation to be one-sided, or maybe a person um, you talking to didn't quite understand what you were saying, you know, and sometimes by changing certain words or how you come across to that person, how you um, 
uh, reword what you're saying, you find out that they may understand things better. I remember a person I was talking to, uh, admittedly this person had autism, but um, it, it works the same way with everyone else. You, I remember I asked him a question and then he said, oh, no. But then I rephrased the question in a different way and then he said, yes. Um, and so this thing, you'll, the importance of how rephrasing things um, and all that, it, it's important. And you'll find out that working out the right way to phrase questions to better help people um, to, to work and communicate better with each other, you'll find ends up going a long way than than the other way, I guess. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, this is a bit of something to think about. When I say something like, I really hate when people do that, you know, hate is an aggressive word and it can sometimes, and even in a soft tone, it can sometimes come across the wrong way. So, if I were to say, I would prefer if people didn't do that, it, it, it prefers a less aggressive, it's more positive to a degree, you know, and so the rephrasing and those kind of things you'll find out can sometimes come across different to people and be more, um, can be sometimes be even better to people. So, yeah, certainly, uh, certainly things to be aware of when it comes to uh, verbal use and that. So, yeah anyway thank you guys um i hope you got a lot out of um out of that and um yeah so uh the next video will we'll be going into environmental factors and how that can be um affected in yeah in communication that so uh thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and uh much love